I want to be respectful of time because I know all of you who came tonight have other places to be and our panelists also. I uh, committed to them that I would get them out of here in a timely way. But the other last big batch of questions that I got were about the emergency manager legislation. So I thought I would say a few words and let some of my panelists say a few words um, before we close tonight. So. Uh, Governor Snyder signed into law last week a pretty sweeping change to the way that we send folks into our local communities and local school districts when they are struggling financially. Now, we had uh, Act 72, uh, which was from 1990, that allowed for an emergency financial manager to go into communities to help try to balance their budget when things had gone wrong fiscally. Now, what we passed, um, what passed through the House and Senate and the governor signed into law last week is an incredibly sweeping change to that that allows for unprecedented authority to be vested in one unelected person who can be appointed as an emergency manager and in the cases of our school districts now this would not just be finances that they would have control of but also academics and curriculum and in our communities they would have not only control of our um, finances, but also ordinance authority, broad ordinance authority, and also the ability to set aside our local elected officials, make any changes in terms of appointments or removals from our city boards, commissions, uh, any of the, the um, you know local community boards that are there in our communities. Uh, so it's a pretty um, pretty scary change, actually. There's some, some things in it that I think for those of us who uh, have been paying attention. You know, this is pretty unprecedented. It happened in a little more quiet way than what we've heard in some other states. Um, and it certainly wasn't as direct as what Governor Walker did, or at least as loud as what Governor Walker did in Wisconsin. But the impacts um, that could come as a result of this legislation are no less broad or no less distressing. These folks would have the ability to break contracts including negotiated contracts for wages and benefits with our employees or any contract with any business that the community has a contract with. They would allow uh, this emergency manager to make changes to when our employees would vest for retirement and change the actuarial assumptions for what their pension benefit might be, even if people have already vested for that retirement and worked their whole life uh, or you know, 20, 30 years um, for that benefit. It also has no minimum requirement that these folks have any level of education that you would expect that they would have to take over such broad authority. Among the many amendments that I had on the Senate floor to try to make this a little more rational of a package of bills, uh, even as it was passing over my vehement opposition, was we've asked our teachers in this state to take a lot of rigorous training to do long student teaching stints to continue their education once they're in our classrooms. And so I thought, if we're gonna ask people to take over academics and curriculums for our school districts, they should at least have a background in education or at least have done a semester of student teaching. <laughs> My colleagues, of course, voted that down. I also uh, tried to strip that ordinance authority language because, um, you know, it's one thing to go into a community if they're struggling with their finances and try to fix the finances, but you look around the communities in Washtenaw County and we're not the same as a lot of other communities. We've made decisions here locally to say, we value that people who work in our communities should make enough to live in our communities. We have a living wage ordinance throughout this county because we want people to be able to afford a quality of life and be able to spend dollars here in our communities when they work here. We also have many communities in our county that have human rights ordinances that we want to treat all folks with dignity um, with no uh, exceptions. And so to allow an outsider that doesn't necessarily share our values and is not elected to be able to strip those ordinances just because it's their values or it doesn't meet their values is a real concern to me. I introduced that amendment and it was voted down. So, um, and there's just a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of, of this package, I think, has really broad implications for our communities. And what we saw in our courts this week is that Robert Bob, who is the emergency financial manager of the Detroit Public School District, um, courts have said he now has authority over curriculum and academics as well because of this new statute going forward. So we're going to see the implications very quickly. And some of my colleagues have said, well, it's really just a scare tactic. We don't really expect people to be going into these communities and taking them over. This is just a, a hammer we're going to hold over their heads. 
But in fact, um, they're having these training classes. They're training these managers very regularly. And so I think they're pretty serious about putting them in a lot of our communities. I know a couple of our panelists have some pretty strong feelings about this legislation as well. So if anyone wants to comment on the emergency manager legislation, this is your moment. <laughs> It's a two-day course. No, I mean, who's educating the new representatives that are coming in brand new that know nothing, and they're voting on this stuff? It's a very good question. Um, when, when we're first elected, there are two orientations that we uh, are eligible to receive. There's so certainly no mandate that we go to them, but there is an orientation that's put on by our nonpartisan business office that basically tells you how your budget works, how, who you get to hire, how you order up a bill, where the bathrooms are, where you sit on the House and Senate floor, that kind of stuff. And then um, Michigan State University has partnered with the legislature for a number of years to do a little bit of background in terms of the budget, where, where the majority of our dollars come from, where the majority of our dollars have historically gone, um, and some of that. And that's a two-day orientation that you can go to in Lansing if you so choose. And that's pretty much it. And, you know, um, when I gave a talk on Saturday, I said it was 66 days, so that must mean it's 68 days today into this legislative session. And all these things that we've talked about today have all happened in 68 days of us being in session in the 96th legislature. So this is an aggressive group of folks who are putting out policies, like you said, with, with very little sort of training for, for what it is we're trying to do in the state. And, and many of them had come, especially in this new group in the House of the 61, lots of them hadn't even come from local government. They're folks who, who ran and are looking at kind of balancing a budget for the first time, whereas um, some of the folks on the panel here today have been at the bargaining table, seen both sides of what it's like to, to try to make your budgets work. So it's a very interesting time in Lansing. But comments on the emergency manager legislation? In the city of Solani, uh, people run for city council. These are these are residents. These are basically volunteers that represent the community, and they are elected by majority vote. And they do the work. They they represent your or at least Ypsilanti residents' ideas, feelings, and they are people you can go to if you don't like the way something's going. I get calls all the time. An emergency financial manager really is an emergency dictator. 